on this episode of the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. We answer y'all's questions. The loyal listeners, we answer them. Please download and subscribe to the podcast, rate it five stars, and write us a good review. Follow the show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Just search Oklahoma Breakdown on any of those, and you'll find us. All right. Our man, Michael Hosty, will kick this thing off. It's time for the Oklahoma Breakdown. It's a beautiful Wednesday, June 8th, and you're listening to the Oklahoma Breakdown with Iker and Lehman, presented by Riverwind Casino. Riverwind is Oklahoma City's premier casino experience. There are so many reasons why Riverwind is consistently voted OKC's number one casino, but it all starts with their amazing variety of gaming thrills and excitement. Riverwind's beautiful award-winning environment plays host to more than 2,800 of the latest electronic games with a huge selection of table games, including Blackjack, Blackjack Match, Roulette, and Teddy's favorite, Craps. We need, we need to get out to Riverwind together sometime soon. I know. Throw some dice. Let's do also, it. I wonder how often they redo those commercials. We need to get in one of those. That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> awesome. No matter what your game, Riverwood has it in spades and hearts. And don't forget the beats and bites festival is going on right now. People love night ranger and starship in may. You're going to love what they got going on in June. Remember $5 general admission kids get it. Kids under 12. Get in free. Ton of fun for the whole family. To buy tickets, visit Riverwind.com. Riverwind Casino, simply the best. Ted, we are recording this way in advance. Probably the longest we that this is the longest we've ever recorded in advance. I don't even know if that made sense the way that I just put right. this. But right now, you are in the middle of a trip to Disney with your family. Oh my God. How, how do you think it's going for future Ted right now? I don't know. Let's see. June 8th. Let's see. I've got the itinerary right here. <laughs> Gabe. What? what is that? This is the itinerary for, uh, for our Disney world trip. So it's color coded. It's got where we're supposed to be at what time. Let's see. Wednesday. We are, we're hitting Epcot looks oh. like we need to uh, make sure we reserve Remy's test track or frozen ever after at 7 a.m. and uh, make sure we purchase guardians of the galaxy cosmic rewind or join virtual queue at 7 a.m. If you miss the virtual queue at seven, you may have another opportunity at 1 p.m. That is we're detailed guys. And I, I appreciate that. Epcot's the one that has all the drinking though right so it's got like the different countries i'm thinking of the right thing right i think that is i think that's right but so i don't know i like to think that future you is just about six drinks deep right now and feel gonna good. have to be gonna <laughs> have to be <laughs> all right let's get to our questions and this first one i i th this one uh, uh, this is important Spencer Heron sent us an email and here's his question. What is one thing that a coach said or did for you in your playing days that made a long lasting positive impact on your life? We are stuck with a kid in school that has a bunch of negative Nancy clown coaches that are sucking the fun out of what is already a demanding sport. I could use some positive things to say, to reignite some joy in the game. Thank you. I will take your answer off the air. Um, this is, this is interesting because you and I, and, and I'm not, we're not that old, but I feel like, I feel like the approach to kids has changed a little bit than when you and I played. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't have many positive things about the way positive things to say about the way that Kevin Wilson coached me <laughs> when I was at OU, for example, I will say this about James Patton. And, and I know that Patton got a lot, got a lot of flack when he was the offensive line coach and we needed to play better for that man. But he made, he made coming to practice fun. 
and coming to meetings fun. Like he just had, he had so much positive energy and that it, it really did affect the way I approached life on a day-to-day basis. Now he was serious when it was time to be serious, when it was time to rip our ass, like he did it. There's no doubt, but that always, that always stuck with me. It's like, Hey, this stuff's important. It's serious. You got to take it seriously, but you can have fun, man. It's okay. And I try to, I try to approach a lot of things thinking about the way that Patton made things fun for me. And if coaches, if coaches aren't doing that, that's, I think it's the wrong approach personally. Like it, there, and it all depends on what age, right? But if this, if Spencer's writing in about a kid, I, I think parents take stuff way too seriously at too young of an age. It's like, no hey, doubt. Jimmy's not getting a little scholarship when he's he's not working on that scholarship when he's eleven. Like it's, it's not that serious. But I, I don't know, Spencer. Maybe that's not the type of advice you're looking for but that was something i gathered it's like hey you can you can take it seriously you can be all in but you can you can have fun it's okay yeah um this is going to be interesting with the uh with the coaches you play <laughs> played for well i'll just tell you right now that so I went to a small, small town, small school growing up. I wasn't, I wasn't coached a whole lot. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It was just kind of like, this is, this is what we do, you know, go tackle the guy with the ball. So whenever I went to OU, it was like a shock to the system because I'd never really been definitely never been yelled at, never really been like, this is just basically playing free range football, so to speak. But uh, my life was pure hell, miserable. Everything that I did was scrutinized. Everything that I did was terrible. Everything that I did was embarrassing, not good enough, don't deserve to be there. And it wasn't until I, I started to, I, it, nothing is fun about that. It's horrible. And you dread it every night. You just, you don't want to go to practice. You don't want to, you don't want to do anything that's associated with it. And what happens is instead of going to get better, you go to not get yelled at. And so there became this animosity between uh well not i wouldn't say between like it was one sided like i felt like it was coming back the other way but until i like made a decision that i'm tired of being told that i'm not doing it right so i just started doing it right yeah yeah it didn't come overnight it didn't come easy but the enjoyment for me like the fun of the game was getting good and doing things right and seeing myself grow as a player like that is what became fun to me and you know it's a it's interesting it's not and it depends what level you're playing at and what you want to get out of it i if you if you want to just hang out if you want to be a part of the team celebrate the wins then you're just then you just kind of you kind of float through but if you want to be good and you want it to mean something to you it has to mean something to get better and there's there's better coaches than others there's no doubt but um, most coaches want everyone to get better they all they want the same thing they want you to develop so whenever you fight that and God, he just doesn't like me. And he, he doesn't want me to do good. He's got it out for me. Like if you take that approach, 
it'll never change. But if you take the approach of screw him, this, is that how you want it done? Okay, watch this. And then you perfect it. That becomes fun. Like that's, that's the only way things changed for me is I quit fighting the feeling like I'm being singled out and it's all against me. And I embraced that coaching and I took that coaching and I'll admit at the beginning, it was like, it was, it was kind of like a middle finger back at it is like, you know, <laughs> it's like breaking a horse, I guess is what it was. You know what I'm saying? And then right. once I finally got that, and then I, 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 there's one of the, the good things that I was able to do is because of that, like switch in mentality, I was able to like take a new thing or a new direction from a coach and implement it right then. So like, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's what, that's kind of how it, it, that's the only way it's going to become fun. If that's the, the type of coaching that you're receiving. Yeah. I, 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 I wish we knew some more details, like how these coaches are sucking the fun out of it for, uh, or in, in this instance, but I, I always, you know, when I, when I talk about playing for Kevin Wilson, it's because he was, he was the hardest coach on me. I hated him the most, but I still think he was the best coach maybe that I ever played for him and Bill Bedenbo. And it's because he was just so demanding all the time. Like, and it was, Basically, and it was personal too. Like it wasn't, you know, generic insults. Like it was very personal. And I cannot, I, I cannot say what he would call me all the time on the air. It is, uh, it is not appropriate. But I was the same way as you, man. I, I was like, I am. I'm tired of getting yelled at. Like, I do not want this dude yelling at me in front of the team anymore. Like, I don't want him yelling at me in front of the, and this when I was a tight end. Like, I don't want him yelling in, in front of all these guys. Like, I'm, I'm tired of it. So it was, and some people respond to that well, right? And that drives you to be better because you just want to, don't want to hear it anymore. Mm -hmm. And maybe you even hear like a, hey, that's good. Good job. But. Yeah, it, that was college. Like as a little kid, I well, I don't know. But even in high school, like Kenny Young, ask anyone that played for that man. Like it was, <laughs> was not sunshine and rainbows. We won twenty eight games in a row, two state championships in a row, and it was, it still's not good enough for that man. Like it was never good enough. So it I can't be. So I mean, I guess that's kind of part of my my point is that is it that the the coaches are sucking the fun out of it or is that you're not getting better you're not listening to the coaching you're in some of it has to be done on your own and some of it has to be you have to spend time on like if they're asking you to do something that you physically can't do well now you have to go fix that part too right you know so it becomes fun whenever you're able to respond to the coaching and give them what they want. And if you can't give them what they want right now, you need to work on it to where you can, because like there's a fine line between going and having fun and going and being good. And like, and I'm not saying that you have to have to approach it that way, but that is, I think that's the way to make that type of environment enjoyable is go from being the whipping post to the guy that goes out there and shows the drill. The, you're the drill tape. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Is that's, yeah. that's, that's the only thing I can say is that's what happened to me. I was the whipping post and then I flipped the switch and then I was the example. Yeah. And the, the process of going from, one to the other and the reality is there's there's some joy in it but not a lot 
Not a lot. It's hard, man. It's hard. hard. And that's, it's like anything in life, like to, to be successful, like it's going to take some hard work and whether it's physical or mental, like it's going to take some pain, man. And some discomfort, right? Maybe, Maybe that would be my, my biggest piece of advice would be like, Hey, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. If you can do that at a young age, you can, you can separate yourself. And now we don't know the details of everything. Yeah. We don't know the details of this situation, but, and that is one thing that I I know we, we tell Schmitty stories and talk about how, how awful it was. And it was, but I will, and I assume you agree, Ted, like I will forever be indebted to that man because he, he, he made you do things you thought you couldn't do. And I have been able to apply that in all different areas of my life where it's like, ah, I can do it. It's like, yep, I can do it. And that is the sooner you can realize that, like, and it's not fun, man. It's not the sooner you can realize that it, it is, it is a powerful thing for a person to have, to be like, no, 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 I, I can, I can go past these limits that I think I have for myself. Yep. Even, even the, even the, there's bad coaches. There's coaches that are jerks. Like there's this thing in coaching about like, and I, and I see it more in, in like little league, not, not necessarily little league, but it's almost like you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be a jerk to be a coach. Right. Don't have to Um, be that when they're young, man. Right. But here's the thing, even, even the coaches that are bad and that are trying to go out of their way to be jerks. Those, even those coaches don't dislike a guy that is there before he's supposed to be there that gives a hundred percent effort in everything he does that makes the corrections whenever the corrections are given and doesn't make the same mistakes every day. Like if you just do those things, you're going to find yourself really getting better as a player. And it doesn't matter what sport it is. If, if you really take the coaching and take the correction and work on the things that you're making mistakes in and don't make them over and over. It won't, it won't be, it won't feel like the fun is sucked out of the sport. Like part of the sport, part of sports is progression and getting better. You can't just go be the same guy every day. Like what's weird is when we're young, you naturally grow and get better as you get older, right? You just get, you get a little bit stronger naturally. You get a little bit faster. You get more coordinated, but you need to take it beyond that. Yeah. So as long as, uh, I, I feel like the coaches are being jerks. As long as they're not asking you to do something like dangerous, I would say just push through it, you know, yep. get, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. All right, let's get to the next question. But first, the only place to stop when you're road tripping is Love's Travel Stops. Love's has over 600 locations in 41 states, offering 24-hour access to clean and safe places. Whatever your road trip needs are, Love's has it. Fuel, fresh food, all the snacks and drinks, including my favorite, yes, Java Amore. That coffee is fantastic. Love's also has you covered if you forget your phone charger or headphones. They've expanded their mobile to go zone so you can grab any of that stuff there. Make sure you download the Loves Connect app for exclusive offers from today's most popular brands. The Loves Connect app also includes a route planner and store locator. When you see that red neon heart on the highway, stop in and say hi at Loves Travel Stops. For a full list of what Loves has to offer, visit loves.com. Opolis Clothing is the exclusive home for all of our Oklahoma Breakdown merchandise. If you want to live your life in buttery soft comfort, go to opolisclothing.com. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use promo code TED, T-E-D, for 10% off your entire order. You still, still get a discount on all of the OU and OKC Thunder gear as well. 
That's opolisclothing.com. Use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. And make sure you send your kids to Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School has a long tradition of educational excellence. With a 12 to 1 student to teacher ratio, no student is overlooked. Bishop McGinnis's college prep curriculum offers 22 AP courses. There are numerous clubs and organizations for students to join. And as a proud member of the OSSAA, there are 14 sports offered. If you want to provide the best possible educational and spiritual development for your children, contact Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School or visit bmchs.org. Financial aid is available. And it's time to get back out on the golf course, people. And there's nothing better to drink on the course than the number one seltzer in golf, Clubby Seltzers. Clubby Seltzers is an Oklahoma company that is already winning national awards because their product is delicious. It tastes exactly like a club special, but it's a seltzer. They're not just for the golf course either. They're perfect to drink by the pool, after mowing the lawn, whatever. If you haven't tried Clubby Seltzers yet, go grab some. You won't regret it. Clubby's first variety pack is out to find a place near you that has clubbies, visit clubbyseltzers.com. Okay, this is an interesting question, and it comes from OK Woo Fighter on Apple Podcasts. And he he says, this has become my go-to podcast for Sooner Football. Love the inside from Gabe and Teddy, all about the things football. My question for both of you is, in your experience as a professional athlete and being around professional athletes, what is the number one reason an athlete chooses where to play. Is it money, long-term security, friends on the team, best chance to win, something else? Well, I, I think it's important to start. It's important to start with, you don't really get to choose. Ted, I mean, you didn't, right. And we can just speak from the NFL perspective, but you know, I know guys that have played in the NBA. I, I know guys that have played major league baseball. I know guys that have played in the NHL. You don't choose if you get drafted. That's like, you didn't, you didn't say, Hey, Detroit, that's where I want to be. Well, I guess Bo Jackson did. And, uh, John Elway did. And I guess maybe Eli Manning, but (laughs) that's just a very small, uh, amount of guys. Yeah. You don't get to choose originally. Now, when it comes to like, if you've got the ability, you're being courted as a free agent, it's money. It's money. Money is number one. If it wasn't for money, no free agents would ever go to like Detroit, Cleveland, Jacksonville, wherever. If they're offering you the money, and that's part of it, right? It's like you could use that as a bargaining chip. Yeah, guys, ah, I just don't know. And they've got to pay you that premium to get you there. I would say it's money. Um, I, like friends on the team. I, I, I think I, that. It, go ahead. It doesn't hurt. But also, I think it's important to point out, like. This also depends on where you're at in your career. Exactly. That's where I was about to go. When you are. And I, I, I am really not a good example of talking about this because, you know, I was, I was bouncing around all over the place. Like I, I went, whoever wanted me is right. <laughs> that was, it's like, it wasn't my choice. Right. You know, like I, I got cut, I got claimed, I got cut, I got claimed, but that's also a good, here's a good example. I, when, when I went to Buffalo, Right. There was, and I think I've told this story on here before. It's a brutal story. And I've got, unfortunately, got quite a few of these from my NFL career. But on a Saturday, going out to a walkthrough, I was pulled aside by my offensive line coach, Aaron Cromer. And he said, hey, we are going to make you the starting tight end. At that point, like, I had not had a break in my career, right? I'd blown my knee out in Tennessee. I had outplayed a kid. They kept him instead of me because he was drafted, but I got claimed by the Bills, and I was thrilled. But I was behind Eric Wood, who ended up being a Pro Bowl center there. Like, I wasn't playing. So as good as getting the NFL check is, like, you still want to play. You don't want to just ride the bench, and that's what I was doing. So Cromer coming to me and saying, hey, 
you're going to be the starting tight end. We'll think you'll be great at it. It was Greg Roman's system. So if you watch the Ravens now and you think about all the tight ends they used, like I was going to be the blocking tight end, the Y tight end in that system. And it was, it was the most joy I had felt in quite some time when he told me that. Called my wife, or then girlfriend, now wife. It was about to, like I was about to cry. Talked to Incognito and Wood about it in the locker room, even though Cromer told me not to tell anyone. Like I was, like it, it was, it was the happiest I had been in a long time, after you know going through a bit of a rocky patch in my NFL career. And we go out to walk through. I am. I uh, smiling the whole time. Got a grin on my face. Like Giro pulls me aside as we're walking out there. Hey, Cromer, uh, did or Gabe did did Cromer tell you uh, about our master plan? And I said yes, absolutely, Coach. I'm so fired up. I won't let you down. He said, okay, go to the tight end room on Monday. And I like, I can't describe like how happy I was. Is this mid season or this? Is, yeah, yeah. It's about halfway through the season. And I was, like, just ecstatic. Like, incognitos punching me during the walkthrough, like, because I'm lined up as one of the defensive guys, like, stuff. And, like, just smiling. Like, I, I can't describe, like, the, the mood I was in. Like, it, it was, it was like, the world had been working against me. And, like, now, like, I'd finally gotten the break I needed. But that's how it felt. As I'm walking off the field, Doug Way, Whaley, the GM at the time for the Bills, pulls me aside and tells me he's cut me. And had they not who, run their master plan past the GM, I guess? I I had just been told I was going to be a starter. And the GM just told me I'm getting cut to bring Mike Gillisley up, TD Mike, fun guy, cool guy, because uh, LaShawn was banged up. And I'm like, but you're like, no, it, no, no, actually I'm not. No, uh, and, and in my head, in my head, like Greg Romer, like, and, and Cromer, like, I keep it on the down low. Like we don't want uh, Matt Mulligan, who is the guy I was going to replace. Like we don't want him, you know, hearing that he's got to play on Sunday. But I'm like, all right. But Giro was like, Hey, start studying the formation, start studying the shifts. Um, we'll put, we'll put the video clips together for you to study over the weekend. I, am, and I went from that to, Hey, you're cut. Go meet with Rex Ryan. I'm like, dude, what? He's like, I know. Hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, you'll be back Monday. It's don't even worry. Like, it's just, uh, you know, we're not worried about it. Like, I know the plan. We're good. Uh, so I was like, okay. He's like, go enjoy the weekend. I think we went to like New York city and just had a weekend. I was like, awesome. Okay. But get the call two days later, Cleveland Browns have claimed you go to Cleveland, get there. And just remember, I thought I was going to be a starter the next right. week. And I'm in Cleveland for six days. I barely even get to practice and they cut me six days. And like people are about to get fired. Things have gone really wrong. Alex Mack was the starting center. I get there. I'm like, why am I here? They had like four guys that played center. I'm like, what? I, I didn't even get to play center in practice. I played guard and actually practiced pretty well. Like the two days I practiced got cut. And they're like, yeah, I don't we're making some changes. I'm trying some stuff. I was just like, okay. But in my head, I'm like, back to Buffalo. Yeah. Back to Buffalo. The plan, the master plan, we're good. They had cut Mulligan just like they said they were going to do. I was ready to, I was like, here we go. Here we go. I'm telling my agent, like, dude, tell the Bills, I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. Detroit claims me. Oh. Uh, Never. Brutal. They were higher than Buffalo in the waiver wire. Never made it back. Ended up in Buffalo the next year. They had signed three tight ends. You should have called Cromer and been like, listen, 
I called everyone, bro. <laughs> I'm going to go get in a fight and get arrested. Okay. Just know that I'm doing it so I won't get claimed. All right. And then you guys can claim me. Oh my gosh. But that's brutal. Yeah. That, and that is, I, I know that was probably not exactly where, uh, where that question probably should have headed, but that's just all, that's an example of where it comes to choosing where you want to play. I would have done anything to get back to Buffalo yep. and it's one of the, you got to have some luck. You got to have uh, good timing. You got to have some support from the coaching staff and uh, just didn't work out, man. It's all brutal. right. That's brutal. People hear that story and they think I'm making up. I'm telling you 100%. That's exactly how it went down. Jeez. Oh, after in the locker room, incognito's messing with me in the locker room after the walkthrough he's like what is wrong bro like what why aren't you because i'm not playing along with him like i normally i'm like whaley just cut me and he's like what i'm like yeah said i'll be back monday but just cut me he's like oh okay uh didn't worry and he even was like oh, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny if someone claimed you like cleveland or detroit oh my god and i was just like oh yeah that'd be hilarious yeah I, I why and I should send you I down to the about, practice squad. Say that again. Why didn't they send you down to the practice squad? They had to remember that you, you have to clear away. I was on the active roster. Do you, oh, you can't. So you, you can't you send. No. Okay. No, you hit the waiver wire and I got claimed. And I think about that sequence of events every single day. I bet. God. Brutal. Because it was G Row was like, you're perfect for it. He even goes, I was probably 305 at the time. He goes, you can get down to like 285. I'm like, oh my God. This is gonna be the best thing ever. Uh, uh, it just life, life has worked out very well for me. I'm very grateful for the life that I've had, but I think about that every single day. And that is why money is the number one reason people choose a place because you just, nothing else is, is you get as much guaranteed money as you can, when you can, when you have the opportunity, because you just never know if you'll get another chance. And the NFL stands for not for long. And it also stands for no effing loyalty, right? That's right. So, yeah, that may have to depress some people, but it is, it's an unfortunate story, but it's a good one. Brutal. It's a real good one. Man. Okay, let's get to our next question. But first, uh, attention business owners. Uh, Sorry, it's me. I was That's scared. I was like, am I looking at the wrong thing? <laughs> attention business owners. Sorry, I'm just over here depressed now. <laughs> thinking about that. <laughs> Dang it. Attention business owners, you need Insurica in your life. Insurica is one of the country's largest insurance brokers with 30 offices throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and the Southwest. Insurica is able to customize programs by accessing the latest information from many insurance carriers. They compare and contrast coverage offerings and pricing in order to design a cost-effective comprehensive program to meet your business's specific needs. Insurica's clients become best-in-class businesses by working with Insurica's team of advisors to manage risk. Purchasing insurance is only one way to protect your business best in class businesses win by avoiding a loss in the first place if your business partners with insurica you'll save huge amounts of money and take back control of your total cost of risk i'm an insurica insurica client and you should be too if your business wants to be best in class connect with insurica at insurica.com that's i-n-s-u-r-i-c-a.com First Fidelity Bank is a full-service financial institution based in Oklahoma with tailored solutions for all your personal and business needs. Checking accounts, saving accounts, home loans, and much more, they do it all. Whether it's online banking from your computer or mobile banking from your phone, everything is stress-free with FFB. Making mobile deposits, paying bills online, and moving money to different accounts could not be easier. First Fidelity Bank provides free ATMs worldwide, making banking convenient, wherever you are. They also give back to the community. FFB donates a total of more than $500,000 to local charities and educational foundations. Make your life easier and go bank with First Fidelity Bank. 
Visit ffb.com for more information. And if you're a whiskey or bourbon drinker, stop what you're doing, head to your favorite liquor store and buy some Balcones products. You got to grab some of Balcones Lineage Single Malt Whiskey. It was just voted one of the top 20 whiskeys in the world by Whiskey Advocate. And you'll be shocked by how affordable it is. Also, you got to snag some of Balcones Baby Blue Corn Whiskey. It's made from blue corn. That's the fancy corn. And that is why it has won more than 25 awards. Last but certainly not least, you got to buy some of Balcones Pot Still Bourbon. It's big flavors make it the perfect bourbon to drink year-round. Remember, in 2012, Balcones Single Malt won the Best in Glass competition, beating brands like Johnny Walker and McAllen. It became the first American distillery to win that competition. This stuff is the real deal, people. If you love great whiskey and bourbon at a great price, then Balcones products are the only way to go. The whiskey may be made in Texas, but the owners are from Oklahoma. To find a liquor store that has it, visit balconiesdistilling.com. All right, this question comes from Martin Long. He asks, do you guys ever think about coaching at OU or at the high school level? Um, I think it's natural to, to think about it because whenever you can't play, you, you still, at least I still think about having some tie to the game and, um, it's not the same, but you still love the sport, love the intricacies and the details of it. So I'd be lying if I said that I didn't think about it. But the thing that is just so overwhelming is how much damn work it is. It is an absolute grind. Those guys, and I know they are handsomely rewarded. I know it, but it, it, it it is tough, man. It is tough, especially during the season. You're talking about, I don't know, you work until you can't anymore. You go home. Everyone else in the house is asleep. You lay down, you wake up, and you get up and go before anyone else is awake. That is the life of a coach during the season. And in the off season, it's better than that, but it's not like it just stops. So that's the one thing that keeps me from, from really wanting to get passionate about it and chase it down. I... This is something that I don't think I know. You, you and I would be great coaches. I know we would. I, I know that we would. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. But there is, with, with what we do with TV and radio, and, you know, now the ability with, with BB being back to, you know, go watch practice every once in a while, that scratches the itch enough Mm -hmm. for us. But if, I mean, coaching at that, like at the college level, it is, it is, it's consuming. And I think kind of with my situation in life, like I, and everyone's in different situations, right? I just don't want to do it. I, I don't want to have to have that, that dominate my life. Yeah. And that's what coaching is like at that level. Now high school is different, right? Could I, could I be a volunteer high school coach, you know, show up for a couple hours? Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of fun. Right. And feel like you're making a difference for kids. But like I am and you and I are wired the same way. Like when we do something, we're so all in. I can't I can't I, I can't be half in well something like that. I could I could do that, but I can't I can't be around I can't be around a loose environment where it's not like you know what I'm saying? Like I'm it's good. If I'm going to do it, I want it to be detailed. I want it to be fast. I want the players to be receptive. It, like, I don't want, I would not want to go waste my time. 
to just go be out there and high five the guys and be like, Oh yeah. Why don't you, uh, yeah, try and stay lower next time. I, I, I've got no interest in that. Like if, if I was ever to do something like I would want it to be, uh, like I would approach it as I like, is the same way I was coached. Now I may not, uh, insult the player, but I would, I would, I would want to do it in, and, and be very demanding, but that's like, it's so different now. It's, it's kind of hard to do that, but I don't know. It's, it's interesting. The other thing to think about with coaching is you're an Oklahoma fan. This is not what college football coaching is. It's usually three years, four years, and you're fired. Or your coordinator, whether you're offensive coach or defensive coach, is getting a job. And that job is in Ames, Iowa. Are you ready to move your family to Ames, Iowa to get to, to carry on that next gig, right? Because the new coordinator that's coming in is bringing his own linebacker coach or offensive line coach. Are you ready? Like, yeah, coach at Oklahoma for one of the best programs in the country? Yeah, let's go. Al Gundy's been there for, what, 23, 24 years? That is not college football. That is not the norm. Oklahoma is not the norm. I... I made an agreement with my wife before we got married that I would not become a college football coach. And it was because of the experience we had together in the NFL. Yeah. We moved what I got cut eight times, nine times. And she was like, I'm not doing that again. Yep. She was like, if you, if you get into college coaching, cause she understands the profession. Cause she got to see it. Like I played for a lot of different coaches. I was, I was at different spots. Coaches getting fired while I was there. Yep. And, and I know that the NFL and college aren't the exact same thing, but it's like, that's the profession. And yeah, if, if I get into coaching, it's a divorceable offense. We made that agreement <laughs> and yeah. I, I plan on sticking to that now high school. Maybe that'd be a little different, like volunteer coaching, but I'm with you. Like, I, I know how I would be if I did it, like we wouldn't be able to do this podcast, you know, like if right. I got into coaching, like you, there's only so much time in a day and I would be, if I did it, I'd be all in. And I, you know, I, it's like my life's goal would be to get the kids better and to win games, like, and, you know, affect their lives and stuff like that. And I've thought about that. Like if, if I got into coaching, like I, I feel like I'd be really good at it, but you life is all about making choices. And, you know, for us, like, it's just not us, you know, it's our wives, our kids, like it, there's, it's, you, you gotta, you gotta make the best decision for you. And I think as far as us not getting into coaching, we're kind of protecting ourselves from ourselves. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's like you're what you're explaining there is it's still kind of like the Oklahoma. It's like the crimson tint on things like, yeah, it would be awesome to to go and watch players grow and get better and help win games and, you know, be a part of a championship. But again, that's not college football college football is coaching and stressing every hour of the day that you, the staff's going to be fired. And then what are you going to do? Like you got your, you got your one year contract right now. I defense didn't perform this year. We didn't do good. I, are, are we going to get, is the head guy going to cycle us out, bring in a new coordinator? We get fired. And can I get a job anywhere else? And, That's and we job, haven't, man. <laughs> If we haven't talked about recruiting and the grind that that has become, we haven't talked about NIL and the grind that that has brought to college coaching. We haven't talked about making sure kids are going to class and tutors and not getting arrested and all that stuff. Like 
being a college coach, like they deserve that money because to me, it sounds awful. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot, man. I, it, it it is. is the number one reason I do not want to ever get into college coaching is I never want my job to depend on 18 to like 21 year old kids. No doubt about that. And, and what they're doing with their lives and how much they care. Like that is, I, I, I'm not that big of a control guy, but like, Oh, just thinking of being at the, the mercy of those guys. Like, Oh, that, that brings me a lot of anxiety. No, thanks, man. I'll radio some television. Uh, right. we'll keep this podcast rolling, man. We'll, uh, I, I am, we're flexible, right? We get to take vacations. I, no, I'm good. I'm good on the right. coaching thing. But, okay. but to the answer to the question, Martin, uh, do I ever think about it? Yeah. I think about it all the and time. Then I, and then I remind myself of all the other things that come like the glory of it is like, you know, being on the sideline and, you know, having a part and winning a championship, but man, that is the amount of work to get to that point is insane. It, it's a lot of work and the YouTube, the YouTube uh, viewers will enjoy this. They give us rings for being part of the radio squad, <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. we get the ring, baby. We get to feel like we did our part. Yeah. There's the, the old uh, 2020 big 12 championship ring right there. Nice. So, um, so yeah, we get enough fulfillment. And our wives don't hate us, or at least that much. We get to spend time with our sons. That's the thing for me is like I love my son's seven. He's playing baseball. Um, I'm like kind of a coach there, and that's it's so fun to go out there and be with him. And like that, that is. It, I know some some uh, some coaches do that too, and it's just way more difficult to pull it off and to be able to have that attention for your family. Yeah. And would it be really, really cool to, you know, make $5 million a year coach college football? Yeah, that'd be sweet, but there's more money, more problems. And, and I still say that there's a give and take man. It. college coaches. It's like the only job where you make a ton of money and you can't spend it because like I said, if I made $5 million a year, I'd drive a fire red Ferrari everywhere that I went, but you can't do that whenever you're a college coach, because there's like this, this stigma, like, Oh, he makes $10 million a year, but God, look at, look at him show it off, making money off those college kids. Like they can't spend it and you can't go anywhere. <laughs> you know, you it's, you can't, you have no free time. You can't right. do anything. What if I want to go act like an idiot? Okay. That's, that's one of the things that I'm holding on to. <laughs> yeah. I once if I want to disappear for a couple of weeks, sure. go off the grid. Like <laughs> you can't, Oh, no, thanks. I think, I think our ultimate, uh, this like, yeah, it'd be cool, but no, thanks. Also, it, even though I think that you and I are pretty, uh, pretty savvy when it comes to football knowledge and had what a lot of people would view as very successful college football playing careers. Like you don't just walk in and become a position coach either. Nope. You start at the ground level, work your way up. Oh, gross. Like, could you imagine Gundy being like, Gabe, get me coffee. <laughs> uh, just we could no be thanks. in there at, at 4 a.m. after a road trip, cutting up, uh, tagging coverages. Yeah, Kent State film. You know, be great. No, I am I am good. All right. This is this is the part of the podcast where we'll insert some of these ads. We don't really know how many they answer, but this is where we're gonna tag it to insert them. If you could do us a solid and listen to all of those ads, just know that 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 helps us out. On that note, episode two twenty one in the books. We'll have a new podcast that'll drop. Monday morning. I think that's right. We're doing this like two weeks in advance. Yeah. Monday morning, right? This will be a Wednesday. episode. 
Just a reminder, you can hear Teddy from 3 to 6 on 94.7 The Ref. You can hear me on Sirius XM Big 12 Radio, Channel 375. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. Have an awesome weekend. Until next time, we appreciate you all for listening. And do what you always do, Oklahoma. Take care of each other.